that was certainly fun, fun and interesting. Pretty much done. I just have one little connection to make. I didn't um, film me doing most of this because, well, you didn't miss much. Mostly just me talking to myself while I try to trace how stuff gets through. Uh, realizing that I'm short on a couple components and had to figure out substitutes and last minute changes. Especially figuring out the best way to implement the relay circuit or at least the control of the relay circuit because I, I didn't really, I hadn't designed that yet. I kind of did that one on the fly. I just have one last connection to make. That's to get uh, the old uh, jack there soldered up. Would you believe a 0.68U is a freaking beast? Why is that so big? I got this one last piece of shielded cable. It has to go in here, connecting up the uh, input jack. Schematics also say that we have a terminal strip and the 68K goes directly to the tube. That's usually good. You want uh, the grid stopper as close to the grid as possible. So of course I have, uh, I have some of those terminal strips that is. Kind of been in my own little world for the past couple hours. I'm not used to talking all of a sudden. Oh yeah, this connection here is one of the most important because it's a passive signal. Let's tack that on. Schematics call for this little 047, 100 volt. I don't have a 100 volt. I'm gonna be using a normal, well, this is a 630 rated one. That should do fine. I have a 200 volt on order. Let's twist that on there. It's the home stretch. Okay, that should be done now. Oh boy. Suppose I should give you the tour. Oh, there we go. Look it over, buds. You know, we got a little bit of floaty action here, but that should be okay. Those are not the kind of LEDs you would normally use, but I couldn't find, I didn't have any of the right ones in stock. Those are on order. They're red ones, the super bright ones, but I believe the important aspect is that they have the same cutoff voltage. So those are rated for the same cutoff voltage from what little information I could find online. This is the diode clipping section for the main. Diode clipping section for the rhythm. That's supposed to be a 0022. Yeah, I underestimated some of my uh, stock here. That, that ended up being an 0027. Hopefully that's okay. It, it's only on the rhythm section though. Every now and then we had to get creative with the layout. There's a vintage 47P. Wait, that's a vintage 470P. That reminds me, I'm forgetting something. I still have to put a 47P on here. Oh. Okay, I got another one of those. Got one more solder joint to do. Uh, it's probably not the cleanest work you've seen, but we're working with a lot of well-used components, some of which we don't really want to chop down because you know we're going to be pulling this apart again one day. If I officiate this mod, I might consider doing it with virgin components. Lots of creativity used. There's the switching. Schematic calls for like this right here. That's what we have going on here with this uh, capacitor diode. I could have set up a terminal strip, but I have different plans in the future on how I want to do switching in this amp. So I didn't want to completely permanize that. Talking about switching, here's our relay circuit. Looking very delightful. Delightful indeed, if you could say that much. By default, when the relay is not fired, when it's not energized, it's on the lead channel. Then when you press the button, it switches over to the rhythm channel. So the button on the back switches the negative. And all this guy has to do is it has the ground wire and then it just grounds out whatever channel's not being used. Meanwhile, I've set things up so that the red indicator light here becomes my channel indicator. And how I did that was, you know, I, I, I scrapped this MOSFET off an old power supply. You can find them on motherboards too. MOSFETs are great. This pupper is rated for uh, like 30 volts, 30 amps. It's going to have no problem firing that light bulb, whereas I couldn't normally integrate it into the circuit the same way it was here. That LED is not going to conflict with the relay. The idea is when the switch is off, this LED is seeing negative on this rail and positive on this rail through the coil. The coil becomes a resistive load. So even when the relay is not energized, current can pass through it. The LED lights up, not enough to fire the relay, but you know, it's leaching power through the coil. Then when you flick the switch and it grounds out this side of the relay, energizing it, well, the LED sees negative on both sides. It turns off and the relay fires. Seen here, when we flick the switch, much of the same way 
the LED can leach positive through the relay. This end channel MOSFET hooked up to the gate is leaching positive through the relay. That's going to tell it to turn on because an end channel MOSFET turns on when it's fed positive. Meanwhile, I've just kind of floated directly onto the terminal so it's uh, right nice. And then of course, when we fire the relay, well, the gate's going to see negative. That's going to turn it off. That should work quite nicely. Underneath this beast is a 2.2K. Schematic calls for a 2.7. Uh, it turns out I don't have one of those in stock, so 2.2 is going to have to do. Had ample 1.5Ks. Not so much 10Ks. I had to get creative uh, repairing on them because, well, I, I only have some old carbons. I need to order more 10Ks. But yeah, this should work now. Key term should. I don't see why not. All the connections are made. Oh, uh, we should uh, put some tubes in this, get some power to it, and get some voltage readings. I gotta stitch this 47P here on this tube socket. Hopefully that'll do. I'm gonna use a set of JJ6CA7s for the power tubes. And then for the preamp tube, my favorite phase inverter, Tungsol 12AX7. And then just some bog standard ECC83S. El Cheapo JJ for the preamp section. Ugh, oh, what a mess. Get the... All sorts of debris on this pupper right here. That'll do, that'll do. Gotta take a moment to make sure everything is tight because, you know, a lot of the facilities in this amplifier are grounding through the components. All these pots need to be tight, especially one of the primary grounds is the input jack that absolutely has to be tight. And that's one reason we would get electrocuted. If that input jack came loose and you were touching your guitar and then you touch the amp, the circuit would try to pull current through you. So, yeah, watch out for that. Hur, 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 hur. Does somebody call a cab? I need to get my meter ready to test bias. I have a bias test jack on this. And if you see right here, that is a bias adjustment. So I can just do it on the fly. All right, place your bets. Is she gonna explode or what? To be honest, my money's on or what? And contact. <laughs> okay, we indeed have two lights here. I don't hear that relay firing. The MOSFET's working correctly though. Here, right, let's do a little continuity check here. This works by grounding out whatever connection is there. That should be ground right now if I press the button. We're getting strange things from the relay. Oh, it's working now. You see the light blinking here? I'm gonna reset the amp here real quick. Okay, that was weird. Stand by. Okay, we need to get some voltage readings. I see no smoke. Let's test out the capacitor here. 343 volts, 321, okay. Over on main power, 450 volts. After the choke, 348, 391 for our preamp section on the screen grids, 448. Because you can see, it's, it's, I, she's not really pulling any current. So a quick calculation, 450 volts. All right, our target bias is about 40 milliamps, 39, 40 milliamps. So let's just uh, turn this until uh, we get that. There we go, we're good. Now we should be sitting at about 440 volts on the B plus. Oh no, still 450, bud. I'm gonna disconnect these meters so they don't screw anything up. Now one of the first things I'm noticing is I don't hear any hums or noises coming out of the cab. There's just the faintest hum. Okay, let's uh, bring up the main volume. Staying quiet, bud. Yeah, we haven't got gain or anything on there yet. Okay, let's uh, flatten out the EQs, which we're not gonna be able to do on this guy as it is. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the knobs on it real quick. This friggin' bass, look at this sticking out of here. That's funny, bud. We're gonna have to trim that shaft. All right, let's turn everything 50%, even though, as discussed, 50% on this is right about there. And uh, for these knobs, we'll maintain the chicken heads on our two gain knobs. And for now, we'll chuck any old knob on the main volume just so we can see what we're doing, right? So not that one, it doesn't use work with it. This one's missing a set screw. Come on, man. What about this friggin' thing? This guy's weird. Aye, okay, that just broke. Wait, how does this even work? Oh, it's got some weird adjustment from the inside. I never knew this about this knob. I'm spending too much time dinking with knobs, bud. All right, now we can control this thing. Shall we go grab a guitar, sir? Yes, I think so, or else what was the point of all this? 
At the end of the day, the fact that this thing is so quiet means one of two things. Either I screwed up and there's no signal, or I did a really good job, or this is a really good quiet circuit. I'm hoping for the latter. Mistakes happen, but usually pretty good at this kind of thing. Oh no, there's signal, bud. Okay. Oh, farty. And we lost sound. Okay, that was interesting. Something's uh, out of spec here. No, we're not getting sound out of the Keen channel either. All right, so clearly something's gone wrong and I'm gonna have to figure it out. <laughs> oh, wow, that was anticlimactic. And what could possibly crap out on me that would be related to turning up the gain too high? Well, it's nice that my blinker works. Anyway, well, back to the drawing board. I'm gonna have to get back to you. Okay, bud. I wouldn't be human if I didn't make a couple mistakes. Let's see if we could go over this here. Okay, so uh, where are we here? Um, this junction of the 10K, 100K here is plugged into the input of this tube. It's not supposed to be. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got these two wires here backwards. Now why I got sound for a little bit and then have it kind of fuzz out, I don't know. We have no drainage resistor on this. That means we got to check our clicky click 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 here. Try it over here. You know, there's a lot going on here. A lot to follow along with. I want to double check. That's the grid input. Should connect to a 47, a 100, and another 47. That 47 is going to stretch across the 22. Dun 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 dun. Oh! Oh, I see another mistake. And this mistake's in my actual layout. Another mistake seems to be here. This 100K should be connecting to the other side of this 47, right? There's the 100K. There's that 47 junction we were looking at. That 100K's gotta go to the other side of it. Oh, that's gotta be a problem. That means we gotta stretch this component over to there. Oh boy, how are we gonna do that? <laughs> okay, we're gonna have to jumper these across. So I gotta take all this crap and move it over one. Okay! Our configuration's starting to become less than ideal. Now that mistake is forgivable because that is a slight oversight while I'm trying to retranspose this layout. You know, that kind of thing. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. A project of this nature is not without its adventure. The thing is, why did it work briefly and then fuzz out? Unless perhaps, did I blow some diodes? Is that a thing? Or did I blow some components in general? I'm gonna have to make a point to update this uh, layout. I gotta get this wire into that hole there. Now, if it doesn't work after I've made these corrections, then we're running into a situation where now we gotta go and chase down damage done. Oh boy, this wire has to go into that junction too. This is a busy junction. I also, the preamp wasn't working properly. See these two alligator clips here? I forgot a ground wire. This side of the um, diode network needed to be grounded. I basically had a floating ground there. Let's see if we can just get that slipped into place. Ah, if I can hold it. All right, we have hazardly have a jumper in place. No. Is there anything else that I'm doing wrong, sir? Okay, let's cut this line here and attach it there. Straight up delete that. And then find a way to illustrate connecting it to the other side of the 470. Well, I can't do much more damage than you already have, so... Poof! Now we can see, oh yeah, if you look at that. Look at these puppers right here. I hear this distortion. Stuff's starting to make more sense. So clearly, in having that hooked up wrong, something has gotten damaged. I've changed the tube, so I don't think it's the tube anymore. Sound that I hear coming out of the amp is freaking awesome. So, okay, phase inverter input is right here. I don't see why the phase inverter would crap out. Well, I think that's about it for today. I'm gonna have to reanalyze my layout, make sure that everything's correct. There's no other mistakes. 
and then I'm probably gonna have to go through this amp looking for a damaged blown component. Cause we did hear that initial sound and then it fuzzed out. So yeah. I don't know. Ye have little faith. Okay, so other than the obvious mistakes, I didn't find any other really in the circuit here except for one. One very important mistake. It was right here. You see that one meg resistor? <laughs> that connects from the ground to the grid of this tube stage. It's the grid leak, it's the ground shunt. You need that in order for the grid to work. I had it connected to the other side of this capacitor, which is exactly what would give you the symptoms of <laughs> little to no signal. And there's no nuisance hums or buzzes. Oh, it's actually quiet. Kind of the sound I expected. A bit brighter than I expected though. And my battery's dead. 